So, um, as uh, we've kind of been introduced, uh, my name is Debs. I'm one of the marine biologists at Gili Lankam Fushi Resort. Um, my name is Vaidas. I'm uh, also the marine biologist at Gili Lankam Fushi and an environmental officer. And thanks everyone for coming, for taking the time to come and see us today. Um, the idea of this is to share what, uh, what we sort of found and, and with this particular uh, coral growing method. Uh, so we'll begin. Uh, oh, I had a clicker somewhere. There we go. Sorry, a bit worried for some reason. <laughs> All right, doesn't work. Oh, so we had a whole bunch of things to go through. Um, so we were going to start with, if anyone wasn't quite sure exactly what a coral is, uh, we could talk about that. Um, also, some of the threats that are facing our reef systems today. And then moving on to restoration and rehabilitation, sort of the, the definitions that are there. Uh, and then we're going to look at some of the projects that are currently in the Maldives, as well as around the world, some different methods. And that's when we move into our project at Gili, um, our Coral Lines project. So we'll look at what are we actually doing, and also what have we found out. So we re really want to share our findings with you all today. Um, and we've got a reoccurring theme really throughout the whole thing about sharing our data and, and keeping it nice and open access. Something that we really want to um, sort of inspire you guys to also do, make sure that we're all sharing and sort of contributing a little bit and helping each other out. Okay, so first of all, uh, what is coral? Obviously a lot of you uh, probably know this, um, but for those just in case uh, we're not sure, Dubs will go through it. All right, so uh, for a coral, it's actually an animal in the glycinide area. So it's in the same class as anemones, hydroids, and jellyfishes. Um, you can see here we've got our coral polyps. This is one single animal. It's got tentacles like a jellyfish does. And uh, it eats plankton. It's got stinging cells in its tentacles. And it's a colonial animal, so it clones itself. And we end up with a colony of lots of tiny little animals. And that's our coral. Inside the animal tissue, we've got symbiotic algae called zooxanthellae, and these photosynthesize, and they make energy from sunlight, which they give most of to the coral animal. Um, and it needs specific conditions to live in. Um, so something that we tend to tell our guests, as long as the conditions are right for the coral and it's attached to something, it's going to grow. So if any of you are unfamiliar with the reef restoration techniques, um, when we're breaking up the coral, we're not killing it. Um, because it's a colonial organism, it's still going to survive, even if it's, a, it's just a smaller colony when we break it up. But the fact that the coral needs specific conditions to grow also means that it's, uh, it's facing a lot of threats uh, these days. So just to go through a couple of things, um, obviously the, the headlines on the news in the past couple of years have been um, quite sad. Uh, I'm sure you all know this. So before we jump into the reef restoration itself, we need to cover the fact that uh, this is uh, extremely important and it's important to mitigate these threads uh, sort of before we even go into the reef uh, restoration itself. So uh, we're not going to go into too much detail, uh, but we'll just cover it very quickly. So we've got some pretty big issues, climate change um, causing the warming of our oceans. So you can see here our famous hockey stick graph. Uh, temperatures increasing at an alarming rate, causing things like bleaching, uh, increased El Nino events more frequent, uh, quite relevant in the Maldives from the 1998 and 2010 bleaching events. Um, ocean acidification as well, with our carbon dioxide being pumped into the atmosphere, it's then dissolving into the ocean and changing the chemistry, making it quite difficult for our corals to start to calcify. Um, also things like um, coastal development, um, lots of sedimentation and things on the reef, nutrient loading, all kinds of things like that which are threatening our reefs. And finally, um, over-exploitation. So uh, our reef give us lots of resources. We want to make sure that we're sustainable in taking those resources, using them in, a, in an environmentally friendly way. Um, and one of the main things for us uh, as a reef restoration project presentation, we really wanted to sort of reiterate and stress the fact that first we need to mitigate these issues to save the reef restoration. We're not going to save our reefs. Um, this is uh, definitely more important. 